It re-emphasizes why intellect is leader in banking for so, so many years and how it can reinvent itself and stay ahead of the competition. In the current ubiquitous world, you cannot understand and help the customers unless you design your products for digital. For me, design for digital is process of building a great experience for the customer for their preferred channels. Artificial intelligence and uh, augmented reality in short term and the mixed reality in the long term and the conversation systems. So digital transformation is in the agenda of uh, every insurance company and the different companies are at a different stage at this moment. But the, the challenge is uh, the companies a lot of they have the, the kind of the legacy systems uh, which are very complex and uh, very slow for the change. So they have a challenge in terms of how uh, they can adopt a digital journey with the kind of a systems, the backend system they have. And more importantly, uh, I think when one way the insurance industry, even though they understand uh, the importance of the digital, they are really unaware of the risks and unaware of the returns and the amount of risk that is involved with the journey. But what is they are missing is they are really not understanding how the insurtech uh, innovators and the disruptors are changing the market. In summary, uh, it is very patchy. The implementation of the digital journey is very patchy for the traditional insurers. And whereas the insurtech in innovators and disruptors are complete, com coming with a completely different model. So uh, there is a long way to go for uh, the traditional insurance companies in terms of uh, showing the results to the digital journey yet. Probably around some five, six years ago, I was working with uh, one of the uh, Swiss um, financial company, and uh, so we are we are uh, uh, doing the engineering work for the for the company. And uh, I was working with the chief architect, and um, I had a very interesting request from him. Uh, say that uh, he's he's into the details, uh, so he, he literally looks into the the code that our team is developing and other things. So the first comment that he received after we uh, gave our first probably the you can say POC is uh, I want the code to be seen like a poem and for me the challenge is uh, I've seen a very uh, I mean I have seen I've worked with very senior people earlier and they are into the details and the code reviews and other things happen but I never expected someone say that I want I want your code to be like a poem uh, so that was a very interesting question but there's a great learning experience for us is that I get to how beautiful our work could be and it's rather than as a pure technical work which probably only the few techies can understand that process helped us to understand uh, uh, the, uh, how we can write a code it would be kind of like a poem and where anyone who doesn't have any technology background can read it and understand the nuances of the code and the best part is um, uh, when we when we adopted that particular approach and we built uh, the way uh, he's looking for uh, we are able to deliver the whole release without any in a single tester it means the both the developer, the analyst, and anyone could see and understand the code, and the quality of the code is so good that we released the whole uh, release up to the production without any single test. And it was a very interesting request, but a very uh, great, I mean, the great experience that I had as part of the process. So the in interesting part is, uh, uh, especially okay, many businesses want to adopt analytics and uh, they want to understand what exactly the big data means. But the truth is, uh, uh, very few of them can really understand what is the value that is delivered. We made things very simple. So what does it mean is we said, okay, what are the actual, actionable insights that we can get out of the data? Forget about whether it's a big data or uh, anything else. What are the actionable insights and what does that mean to the business and how the business can benefit out of that. And how we are trying to champion that particular cause is, uh, we are helping the respective business uh, uh, in identifying what are the use cases which will benefit them because it, it, you, you don't have anything like one size fits all you do one thing and it will benefit the whole company that's not the case every every uh, every use case is very different and how one need to approach that is uh, completely need to be customized depending upon the data that is required for that particular business and other things so we are trying to simplify the whole process so that moving away from a technical jargons 
we are just explaining that what does that mean to the business and what is where they are right now and where they can be by uh, adopting this particular uh, technology more as a business opportunity and uh, more importantly what is the cost of ignorance if you ignore it what does that mean to your business so that's how we are helping our customers to understand the value of it rather than talking too much of a technical jargon the biggest problem probably is a universal problem for everyone the quality of data so because uh, i'll give an example like for example let's say the customer data so no one knows what is the source of truth because the marketing team has their own data and the data warehouse will have some other data and and probably the the client services team will have their own data so everyone has their own data and unfortunately when people are approaching uh, the the business problem earlier they approach it in silo they never uh, they never taken a look what does that mean they, they have never had a holistic view of that so we at this moment that is a one biggest problem in terms of understanding uh, what is the right data and the second thing is very simple it's like garbage in garbage out so uh, and and what does that mean uh, overall is see for example like um, when you are taking to the different business way let's take an analytics problem and at the end of the day uh, whatever the technology that you apply it is a human who need to infer the data and the problem is every human will have their own biases and this cognitive bias is another bigger problem in terms of arriving at this thing because when someone is approaching towards a problem he will have his own expectation if the data says something else uh, he will suppress that truth because he doesn't know uh, probably that is a truth and what he is expecting is not the truth so these these kind of these are the various problems that uh, the people have with the data see uh, the, the the interesting part is okay we are working on some of the use cases where we are using the data science and ultimately the ai to augment the humans in terms of taking the right decisions so there are various tools in the market and uh, if you see among all uh, the r and the python are uh, kind of uh, uh, highly utilized even though there are more um, uh, enterprise tools which are existing and all but in terms of adoption r and python so from a dimensions perspective people are using uh, the tableau and uh, the power bi and uh, from in terms of a static and statistical programming language perspective a lot of people are uh, using the python and uh, again the from a uh, people are always obviously using a lot of machine learning I, even though there are a lot of uh, uh, big names like uh, google amazon uh, they provide the machine learning algorithms available but uh, the data scientists some of them are building their own models because uh, uh, the problems are different from uh, scenario to scenario I mean, uh, so far, if you see in uh, in the 90s and early 2000s, a lot of people used to talk about a Moore's law for chips. So the interesting thing, machine learning is probably the thing which has defeated that particular formula, and so the the way that it's getting adopted is uh, much uh, faster than what anyone is anticipating. There are various reasons because uh, the lot of uh, the hardware got matured, and a lot of the tools got matured, and more importantly. Uh, there is enough data that is available at this moment than what it was few years ago so what how exactly the machine learning is helping so for example the, uh, it is really uh, probably there is a gigabytes or terabytes of a data it can go through that all the the data and understand the complexity and come with a very precision models and those model every organization is, is tried to do and the organization are using again uh, those models as i said in for one of the earlier question that to understand what are the opportunities and what are the unknown risks so i'll give you one classic example of if you see the recent uh, hurricane irma so there is a us agency who predicted the model and there is a europe agency who predicted the model and interestingly for the the hurricane that is happening in the us even the us is so uh, i mean they are comfortable with the kind of quality of the tools they use in terms of prediction the european model was more accurate than the us model so the that really helped in terms of uh, the saving a lot of lives and uh, lives in florida and other places and all so if you see how this is happening again it's because of the data science if you see how they are able to predict that more accurately than what it was in the earlier days it is amount of the data that is available so what is the difference between the us model and the europe model it it uh, it, it is again the how they are differently approaching that so uh, so this is one classic example of uh, 
uh, machine learning and how the models could make a huge difference not only for the businesses even for uh, the human life so if you see uh, the world i mean there is a there is a lot of mistrust in the business uh, and if you see in india for the sake a lot of people in uh, various places they go for a less purely based on the cost even though there is a better uh, uh, rates are available with uh, i mean all the private insurance companies and everything so the blockchain helps technology the basically the underlying technology of the blockchain really helps in terms of bringing the trust back to the business and for insurance uh, uh, companies cannot survive without adopting the technology and more importantly it, it brings a very interesting business model which doesn't exist before for example the the biggest issue that insurance companies deal with is the the fraudulent claims and if you see uh, the if people can build uh, using the blockchain technology the the claim validation uh, process and which will uh, make the things much more transparent and that is just only one of that and another thing is a peer to peer insurance and uh, so a lot of insurance companies are interested in moving some of the book of the business into the peer to peer to peer insurance and again the blockchain the underlying technology of the blockchain really uh, enables that that kind of a business model and if you see in other way also uh, if you see the humans uh, life uh, longevity is increasing because of the maturity in the healthcare and various other things if you see in us alone there are kind of uh, 7.4 more than 7.4 billions of uh, dollars are unclaimed and the people doesn't know uh, whom uh, this money has to be reached and again this the, the the blockchain technology really helps in terms of ensuring that that money reaches to the right people so in short the blockchain is fundamentally changing the business model of the insurance and uh, and it is bringing a lot of uh, the, the transparency and the trust uh, which is the need of the the way the business are get conducting themselves uh, in the recent times and more importantly that will benefit both the insurance companies as well as uh, the the end consumer because the, whatever the savings they have the benefits that have that will be passed back to the customer so yes i think there is the blockchain is making a fundamental difference to the business model of insurance